Hey out there, December in Maine, looking to make a solar heater using beer cans and this piece of glass and a frame. These are fairly popular nowadays. Uh, I made a smaller one for my little shed um, that has worked quite well, uh, but I really want to make something bigger. This is about three times as big as the first one I made. And this one has two pieces of plate glass together. Now inside those pieces of plate glass is this these streaks that you see are on the inside of the glass. So one of these pieces of glass has to come out. Now, these were free. I didn't pay anything for them. I have two of them. So if I completely mess this one up, I have another. Uh, and I have no other use for these. So this is the one I'm going to use them for. Uh, so to start with, um, I need to safely break out this pane of glass. This is the inside, the side that looks the worst. Uh, the frame looks the worst on this side. The outside looks nicer. Uh, without breaking Whew, that took some effort huh it looks like I got just the front glass and not the rear glass yep which is exactly what I wanted now for the cleanup. What a mess. So the next step is to build a frame around the outside of this that this will recess into. Alright, so there's my frame ready to fit my window, which is over there. And over here to the left is a free piece of plywood that I got um, from somebody who was doing some remodeling. This had actually had carpet glued to it at one time, which really doesn't make a difference for me. They glued it on the side that's the exposure side. So I'm going to face that side towards the house because that's the side that's most likely to get wet. And I'm going to recess it inside the frame, which will help to strengthen the frame up quite a bit too. All right, so here's our box, all cocked up. I cocked the back seams as well and all the places where there were fasteners going through the plywood. So there's no airflow once it's fully built. Okay, so I've worked, raised the work platform just a little bit so that I can more easily add the insulation. Also cut this piece. I uh, used a table saw to make the long cut, just plunged in and used a uh, jigsaw to finish the cut. And the purpose of this is to sit somewhere in this ballpark and support the end of the cans, like so. The reason I wanted the slot is because I want airflow to go up through the cans and of course this is going to be hollowed out as is this. So I wanted something that would support the cans weight on the bottom because there's going to be a lot of them. I'm not sure how many just yet. And this will support the weight so that I don't have to glue them in so as they expand and contract they'll be able to do so without um, coming loose from their supports basically. So run a little bead of caulk right in here just to Keep that in place. Same thing along this edge. And I've got just a little bit on the end here. So these two pieces will fit together. I've cut them just a little long so that when I put them in there, they'll tend to stay. Sinking it into the silicone a little bit. Making sure everything is all the way down. Just like that. We've got our insulation in. So I'm going to start taping the joints all the way to the wood. And I'm going to use ducting tape. So the aluminum coated tape. The reason I'm doing this is because the temperature inside this box can get hot enough under real specific circumstances to actually melt this insulation. We don't want that. So this will pr provide a barrier and it will prevent leaks as far as air is concerned to the box. Now. I didn't insulate the back, and the reason for that is this is directly up against the sheathing of the house because I haven't sided the house yet. So there's no reason to try to prevent energy from going from right here into the sheathing of the house. It's not going to cause any problems and it's in the insulated vacuum of the home, so why not?
whole box is sealed up as well as it needs to be. And I'm getting ready to install this vent. Now, this Air Vent Ink vent uh, at Gibraltar Industries Company, um, what it does, and the reason I picked it up, first of all, it was 10 bucks at the local store. I'm sure uh, you had to buy it at a non... Uh, the store... The store that I bought this at is, is a store that uh, basically does you know fire damage places and that kind of thing. So I'm sure these retail for a whole lot more money than ten dollars normally. But uh, ten bucks was a good buy, so I bought a few of them. What I like about it is not just that it's got a large surface area, but that these louvers open and close depending on the temperature. So supposedly, supposedly they automatically open at 70 degrees and closes at 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, approximately which works well for what I want because it will stop airflow through the box at nighttime when the temperature outside is below 40 or the inside of the box temperature gets below 40. Okay, as you can see I've marked out the spot where it's going to go. And it isn't this size, it's this size because this flange is going to mount just like that. It's not going inside the box because I, I want this to be roughly flush with the edge of the foam so I don't want to have this flange to deal with on the inside. And it really only sticks out about an eighth of an inch, so it's not going to make a hill of beans a difference against the house, especially since the plywood is set in just a little bit here. It's a little hard to see that. It's in by about a sixteenth. All right, so I picked these up at uh, the local big box store for less than three dollars a piece. Uh, they're not quite as much airflow as the vent. You can see by comparison, the amount of air going through that vent is greater than the amount of air going through these two by a significant margin. However, I'm banking on the fact that, of course, as you heat air, it expands, and therefore the outlet side will have a greater volume of gases that need to be exhausted and therefore smaller size here, larger size here is no problem. I'm going to use a countersink bit to sink the heads of these just enough so that it'll sit basically flush. All right, here's the opposite side of the vent that we were just installing pretty much flush all the way around. All I really have to do in here is paint leading into the box or leading into the vent. Now if I, as I come around you can see that it ended up basically basically flush with the edge of the of the box which is perfect. And then on the other end this is what we have. You can see I've got the fingers sticking up like that. These are obviously just going to get bent over like that. And to make these stay down and look a little bit nicer, I'm going to take and, and uh, use some sheet metal screws or some kind of screws and screw these little tabs down. Down here, of course, I'm running into the wall a little bit, but that's all right because I wanted this to be as close to flush with the bottom of the box as possible to utilize as much of the airflow of the inside of the box as I could. But look like that. Put some screws in it. 
throw some tape on it, and it'll be ready to go. So there, just like that, I have the first coat on. I'll probably put a second coat on the edges at least. Probably not this area because I've got a lot of paint on that. When I do get a small can of spray, I'm going to spray that brown, the leftover brown there, and just make that all black and blend. There's the two inlets. Looking good. So I want to show you in real time how I remove the top and bottom of these cans. So I'm using, this is made by OXO, it's a hand type can opener, kind of a standard deal. It has a lock, which I don't actually use. In fact, I, I kind of hold, found that I it, it differs from the top to the bottom how much pressure you need to use, and it's kind of a feel you just get after you've done a few. And yes, the first three or four cans that I did, I destroyed. So here's the real-time um, way how I do this. The tops are a little easier than the bottoms. I usually start about here because I want this section of the can as I'm going around here I want the other side of this attached for reasons of it not folding in on itself so what I do is I clamp it until it goes now again that didn't lock that was the sound of the blade entering the can and then I like to turn it towards me and again I'm keeping gentle pressure on the handle as I'm turning and just like that top of the can comes right off. Now, you're going to find that some cans do not work well for this. These, this brand of can happens to work really well for it. Uh, other, other cans of beer, uh, Miller High Life for example, does not work well for these. Alright, now the bottom's a little trickier because we're asking a lot of a can opener, but I set it just like so. Again, let it break and then as it's, as it's turning, I will turn and lock the handle. Now, first time, sometimes that happens. Not every time, but maybe every two or three cans. So I start again, and once I get it locked, it goes. Just like that. So, that was one can, and of course I have that little bit left in there. So what I do, is very carefully, because I do have some reasonably sharp edges here to deal with, pull it out. That's it top and the bottom. I'd usually do these in the house sitting down um, while I'm doing something else like watching YouTube or some other such thing on my computer uh, which kind of takes away from the boredom of it and I have a bucket that I set these two things in and of course these get recycled in the normal aluminum recycling facility or you know any metal recycling place will will take these for a little bit of money so there's one. So here's what I'm using to glue the cans together no, I didn't build these specifically for this purpose. They're corner boards, actually, that are destined to go on my storage building. Uh, and I just have not got a chance to install them yet. I pre-painted them front and back so that they would last. So they've just been in the garage, and now they're getting used for this. But the great thing for this is that they will keep the rows of cans nice and straight while they cure, and while I'm gluing them together. So how much glue and where to put it? I usually start with one on the bottom and I apply to this bottom lip and obviously I'm using silicone uh, I'm using the paintable type uh, I'm not using the high heat stuff and the reason is expense I built one of these before from what I can see on the web none of them seem to get much hotter than 150 and if they do it's a rarity uh, so I'm using this because it's rated to 150 and usually when they're rated to 150 they'll actually take a little more before they are compromised and really, once they're in the box, gravity's going to keep them together. So that's what the bead looks like. Nothing major. Stick them together. Just enough. Uh, I usually tend to run my finger down the side of it like so. Just to distribute it a little bit more. And just like that, two are together. So, obviously, build from there. So there is exactly half of what I need. 13 cans tall. And I need 12 rows of them, and there are six there. They're going to dry overnight. Start in on the next row. All right, so I'm going to paint these up. I'm doing it on styrofoam. It's just a little easier to do it in the box because I'm going to be able to turn them and stuff as I go. Um, and that's uh, every single can that's going to go into the project is right there. Get them painted up. As far as paint, El Cheapo flat black spray paint. Um, the goal is that this box is not going to get too hot to. Uh, destroy the paint because hopefully that heat will be going into the house. 
The other box I built, I did with cheap spray paints, worked great. Um, you know, never, never caused any problems. So, do it again. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my two braces in. It covers the bottom's gonna be caught by that lower lip. Up here, you'll notice that I ended up cutting the wire a little shorter. Excuse me, I ended up cutting the strapping a little short, the plumber's tape. But in the interest of not throwing things away and reusing things as much as possible, um, I just used a longer screw, which is fine. Uh, these are not particularly tight. A little tough to see that in the video, but. They're just tight enough so that they retain the cans and they allow them to slide as they expand and contract. Alright, I've gone ahead and laid a bead of caulk. Pretty fat bead actually. Going on the flat and the vertical there. And I'm also going to caulk in the edge once the window's in. So let's drop the window in. It would be really handy if I had another set of hands to give me a hand doing this process, but I don't. So it's going to have to go as it goes. This is a lead hammer, meaning that it's a rubber hammer filled with lead. Works really good for slightly delicate operations such as this. So, pretty pleased with that. And All right, so I've gone ahead and painted the whole box. Everything's looking pretty good. This is the back side, of course. Uh, and I'm lucky enough to have this rig. This is actually uh, used for bending aluminum trim, and I'm gonna use it to bend some flashing to make a piece to flash the top of that so it doesn't leak. So here's a mock-up of what it's gonna look like. You get that under layer, which is the first one I cut, which goes the full length of the piece. You've got these two stepped layers now show you up on the top. That one's a little shorter, but it'll be alright. So I'll cover up that the joint where these two meet on the vertical with the shingle. Now the horizontal, of course, is going to be a place where water could get under, but if it does get under, which it might, I'll probably caulk this joint too. This probably caulk right along here as it is. But if it does get under there, this one will repel the water and it will have a chance to come out underneath there. So, not ideal, but it's uh, it'll be just fine. It'll keep the water out. Um, and it'll look nice too because it's brown. So I'll cover everything with this brown. All right, so the heater's ready to go in. Went over the land today and there's two and a half feet of snow between me and getting it installed. So it's gonna take me a little bit to get it installed. So you're gonna have to wait on the results, but please hit the subscribe button. I'll have that video out probably within another week or two, just as soon as I can get it out there. If you like what you see, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you wanna say in the comments. Thanks.